I understand that your grandmother gave you some advice that you've never forgotten and that impacted your life uh, once. Can I ask what that was and why it was so powerful? <laughs> uh, my grandmother was a very practical woman. Um, she was a doctor. She was a farmer. She she was a mum. She she got on with stuff the whole life. She was never she was never idle and and she always she always saw life as it was. I thought. And she was quite old by the time she gave that advice. I think she was already in a retirement home. But she and I were great friends. We always, we always were all through my adult life. I remember when I was at university, we'd ring, I'd ring her on, on a Sunday, and we'd do the the big cryptic crossword for the weekend down the phone together. So she was a great friend. And one one day when I was in my, I think I was sort of late late-ish twenties, I went to visit her and I told her what was going on in my life. And she said she sort of paused and looked at me after and after a moment or two, she said. You, you know, Mary, I think you should grow your hair and get married. <laughs> <laughs> it, sort of, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, it was excellent advice as it turned out. Um, I did, and I did, um, and as as it turned out, she was right. Uh, but it sort of took me by surprise at the time because I had very short hair. I was very much not married. I was living in assorted, um, sketchy house shares and sort of commune type setups and leading a very uh, a very experimental sort of life, uh, which was fun and interesting. And and her, her advice was timely um, because it hit on something I hadn't really been able to put into words at the time, which was that it was starting to become less fun. As I got older, living like that stopped being, stopped feeling as though it could go on forever. Um, and it's, and it, it was beginning to dawn on me, I think, although I, I, don't, I don't know that I'd have put it like this to myself, but it was beginning to dawn on me that I was getting older. Um, and that leading a, an experimental, communitarian, um, avant-garde-ish sort of life um, might not be as fun by the time I was, I don't know, 45 or 60 or older than as it was when I was 24. And, and you know, I don't, I don't think I sort of went away and ruminated. Um, I didn't spend lots of time thinking, right, by myself. Or, and I didn't, I didn't abruptly uh, make any changes the next day, but it stuck with me. Um, it must have stuck with me and it must have had an impact on me. Um, I think I think what Grandma was trying to say, and she was she was a very, as I said, she was a very practical person, very clever, but also very practical. Um, was have you considered being normal? Um, which of which I, I honestly hadn't up to that point. I had I I think I had sincerely not considered being normal uh, as as an available option. Um, it was it just seemed obvious to me that uh, the way to live was in in defiance or in contravention of any kind of expected expected social norms or expected that doing it like that just wasn't going to work for me it was going to be boring and dull and stuffy and conformist and etc 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 and that the the obvious the obvious ethical experimental avant-garde-ish um, thing to do was to try and try and try and devise a set of principles for me for living from scratch that this was this that that was that was the obvious right and proper thing to do i mean um, I'd, I'd ingested a fair amount, I suppose, of critical theory when I was at university, which which kind of underscored all of that. Um, I was a I was a radical leftist. I I believed in um, flouting the flouting and thwarting and subverting the status quo. Um, so just be normal was <laughs> paradoxically very subversive advice at the time. Um, but I tried it, and as it as it turned out, she was right. I mean, not least that it's it it turns out. I think one of the great one of the great secrets of being normal is that it's 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 actually very liberating in terms of in terms of how eccentric you then have permission to be because you fly under the radar. 